Good morning, everybody. I hope this video finds you well. Uh, I just want to film uh, something here I've been meaning to talk about for a little while, and you guys have said you want some newer content. All right, today is September 21st of 2022. How's that for new enough? Just this morning, I went out and I took a look at an antique tractor, and you guys are not going to believe this. I did not buy the thing. All right, I did not. And I'm going to tell you guys why. And I'm going to tell you guys more importantly than my rambling adventures here what this means for you and why you probably also shouldn't buy an older project tractor right now. Okay, now first off, disclaimer, uh, obviously I did do a lot of tractor restoration videos and content over the years. Now, the reason for that is because even five years ago when the market wasn't quite as good as it is right now, and I'll explain what I mean by that, uh, it wasn't the best investment of time and energy to fix up an old tractor, dollars and cents wise. Uh, but the reason why I did all that stuff is I was making a bunch of money on the internet at the time, producing those videos, and parts were cheap, everything was cheap back then, so it was a pretty profitable way to spend the day, and lots of people enjoyed watching me fix those up. Okay, now that is not a normal circumstance. This video isn't about, you know, people with an online audience that they can capitalize on, like I used to. Um, this is about people who, let's say, especially over the last several years, you realize that the current iteration of polite Western society is on its deathbed and things are falling apart out there. So you realize it might be kind of nice to have an old tractor around so you can, you know, pull some logs, pull some trees out of the woods and you can use that for firewood. You can cook food. You can, you know, have it sawed up, you know, somebody with a sawmill. Uh, or maybe you want to grow some more of your own food. Okay, so you want something that can plow your garden. Uh, you want something, you know, maybe you want a few cows or a handful of sheep. So you need something that, I mean, it doesn't have to be that great. It just has to be good enough to, you know, to shred the pasture, knock down all the weeds and stuff they don't eat a couple times a season. Okay, you want something like that. So you're looking for older farm equipment. If that's you, this is the video for you. All right. Now, I'm just going to get right into the cost breakdown here. I'll tell you guys, this is a nice little farm all H. I kind of knew it was probably going to be a, rust a Rust-Oleum restoration. And by the way, nothing against Rust-Oleum paint. That's actually what I use to paint, you know, like my welding trailer and a bunch of the uh, tools and equipment I built over the years. It's actually held up amazingly well, especially considering that stuff. I don't even know what it costs now, but when I bought it, it was like 30 bucks a gallon at Home Depot. So, I mean, nothing against Rust-Oleum paint, dollar for dollar, that stuff's pretty good, but a Rust-Oleum restoration, all right, old car guys are going to know what a Bondo restoration is, people in the truck community, that's like when you take something that runs and drives kind of okay-ish, and you hose it down with the cheapest paint you can get, and it's been restored, and now, you know, it's a classic, and they try to sell it for as much as possible, that's a Rust-Oleum restoration. All right, looking at the pictures in the ad for this tractor up the street here, uh, I kind of knew that's what it was very likely to be. Uh, and I'm also not really looking for a project right now. But you guys know me. Um, yeah, always dragging home junk I don't need. I say that. I got a lot better about that over the last several years. I don't have a dozen broken tractors sitting in the yard now or 10 of them, whatever it was. Um, and this thing, it's like right up the road for me, so I wanted to go check it out. Okay, so... Decent little farm all age. There's not that much you could tell unless you can start it and like drive it and stuff. I didn't do that because there wasn't anyone there. All right. It was parked. It was literally like pulled right up to the street in this person's yard. Uh, so I did walk around it and look at it, but I wasn't going to try to like fire it up and drive it or anything without the people there. And there wasn't anyone there. I knocked on the door. I tried the phone number. There's just no one around. So here's a couple things you can do for future reference. The clutch pedals on those things are on this long cast iron lever, so you can kind of tell how much by how much side to side play there is in that, uh, how much wear and tear that tractor's had over the years. It's not a perfect test, and it theoretically can be fixed. You know, you can put a bushing in there, or whatever, but no one really ever does. Clutch pedal is real tight on that uh, in terms of side to side slop. I looked at the little diamond grip things that they have casted into the pedal; they're not worn down very much at all, actually. So I really think that was probably a good little tractor. I don't think it really has that much use on it, not compared to some of them out there. But I optimistically could have gotten this thing for about $1,000. You say $1,000, and we're just assuming that it runs and drives. Okay, the ad says it runs and drives. Like I said, I don't know. But assuming that it runs and drives like it's supposed to, which is a big if, if I could have gotten that thing for $1,000, which is a little under their asking price. Okay. If that's the case, 
then you say, well, that sounds like a pretty good deal, $1,000 for running and driving tractor. Well, looking around this thing, it's going to need two new rear tires. All right, one of them is badly weather checked. Uh, the other one, it looks like it has some damage. It looks like it, I don't know, drove over a T-post or something. There's a section about the size of your fist th that's like down to the cords on the, uh, on the, on the tread. So yeah, it's going to need two new rear tires, two new tubes, uh, and at least one rear rim because it was just slathered in Bondo. You can tell that thing probably had some calcium chloride or something in it so the rear rims are rusted out. Now, to state the obvious, tractor tires are not like truck tires. This isn't a deal where you can buy, you know, some good rear tires for your pickup truck or whatever, some 8-ply or whatever for $160 each or whatever. For a set of 38-inch BKTs delivered and tubes, and the BKTs, I like them. All right, that's like the bare minimum what I consider to be a good tire uh, for farm stuff. You're looking at almost $2,000 reduce. All right, uh, and that's as of about a week or so ago when I priced this out. Probably someone is going to try to be a jerk and be like, I found this for $1,850, now so you don't know what you're talking Okay, but if I had to do that job, I would not want to do it unless I had about two grand set aside that I could spend. Okay, so you're looking at about $2,000 for the rear wheel situation on that tractor, and that's not all it needed. Like I said, Rust-Oleum restoration here, so they didn't really fix up many other things. It looks like it's going to need a couple gauges. Uh, the wiring is fairly fabric cobbled, going to need some hydraulic hoses, the steering wheel, all the rubber's like old and broken off of it, just about, and just like, hmm, got some of it still there, but it's pretty rough, and the seat pan is badly rusted. Okay, so let's say about $500 more, just to fix all the little stuff it needs, and that probably leaves a little bit of money aside for tune-up, and maybe just, you know, just some minor stuff you find as you go. Okay, so let's see the, the mental math on this. We got $1,000 reduced for the tractor, hopefully. Let's just say $1,000. You got $2,000 for the rear wheels and then $500 in little stuff. You're looking at about $3,500 for that thing. Uh, by the time it's actually, you know, how it should be, we'll just say. So $3,500 for a running and driving, eh, sort of restored Farm All H. It's not really a restoration quality paint job, but on the higher side of average for a working tractor, let's say that. $3,500, that doesn't sound that bad. Okay, but here's the thing. You get on whatever your favorite local classifieds are, wherever you live, right now, and you search restored tractor. You will find Farmall H's, you will find Farmall M's, you will find John Deere A's and B's and equivalent tractors, running and driving, turnkey, beautiful restoration for three to $4,000. I know because I've been watching them because I've wanted an excuse to look at classified ads for things I don't need so I can make this video. But I'm trying to help you guys understand this. Because contrary to popular belief, it is actually not only possible but very easy to spend hundreds of hours working on something and actually end up with less money somehow than what you started off with. Tractor restorations are a prime example of that. Okay. I saw a beautiful, oh, I wish I bought this thing, a beautiful Farmall Super MTA, uh, fully restored, like automotive quality paint job, brand new. I think they were like Goodyear tires. They weren't, you know, BKTs. They were one of the higher end ones, um, you know, for $4,500. Now that one sold, obviously. I kind of wish I bought it, even though I don't really need that thing. Um, yeah, so here's the deal. You know, you got $3,500 in that Farmall you can see how quickly parts for these things add up, especially tires, especially in the, uh, the post-COVID world where everything costs more, especially items made out of steel and rubber. Here's the point of this video. Now, first off, I'm not saying you shouldn't restore an old tractor. All right, if you got grandpa's tractor, you know, that's in, you know, Uncle Ted's barn or whatever, you want to fish that thing out of there and fix it up, that's awesome. That sounds like a good project. I think you should do that. Additionally, if you have a couple kids, hopefully you have more than a couple, you know, you got some kids and uh, you want to teach them about mechanical things you, you think it'd be fun to fix up a tractor together like a father-son project, that sounds great. By all means, you should. Okay, but here's what I'm saying you shouldn't do. You should not buy an old tractor with the impression that you can fix it up cheaper than you can already buy it fixed up for. That's what I'm getting to. All right, 
That farm wall actually isn't an ideal example because somebody got it, allegedly, somebody got it running and driving and painted the sheet metal. But you can still see, to fix all the little stuff, to swap out the rims, mount those giant tires, that's a lot of work and you don't really save anything. In fact, you could pro you'd probably actually lose money as opposed to buying a fully restored one right now for about $3,000 on the online classified service. Okay. Now, there are a couple caveats to that which you should know. You don't have to buy new rear tires and a rim and tubes for $2,000. Someone will say that, you know, I know Uncle Farmer Larry's barn, he's got you know, a couple of 38-inch tires back there and rims. There, you know, he'll sell you all that stuff for 500 bucks. That's awesome, okay? But unless you already have connections like that or you know somebody who you know, has a bunch of parts laying around they can maybe sell, don't operate on that assumption. Because eh, let's say they were in good shape when you put them there 20 years ago. Now they're all dry rotted from sitting, you know, in a damp, humid barn for that long. Or let's say that he sold them to someone else, or you know, just whatever. You really have to assume you ha you're just going to buy the stuff and have it delivered. That's the other thing. You know, what if Uncle Larry's barn is five hours away? You know, that's a 10-hour drive. You know, plus gas at four bucks a gallon or whatever. You know that now your five hundred dollar tires are looking a lot more like eight hundred or nine hundred or a thousand dollars. You know, and that's assuming that they're actually in good shape, which they might not be. All right, so that's not that's not a perfect example. None of this really is. But I'm telling you guys, you're not you're not likely to buy an old tractor and fix it up for less than you can buy it for fully restored. Now you say, why is that? That sounds too good to be true. Well, it's supply and demand. The glory days of the old tractor hobby, in my opinion, were around 2007, 2008 or so. That's when normies started buying old equipment just so they could fix it up in large numbers. That's when that Chip Foose guy, who's a, he's like an automotive uh, guy. I don't really, I don't follow that circle, but he restored a John Deere like a 4020 or something, and then thousands of his gearhead followers went out and started buying old tractors and um, improving them. Let's just say, okay. That's uh, that's really about when the hobby peaked, 2007, 2008. If you look back at the pictures from tractor shows with just thousands and thousands and thousands of people, what you'll notice is they're all very old people, and most of them were not in very good health, and that was 15 years ago. Most of those people now, unfortunately, have passed on, or else they're in a nursing home, or they're otherwise not in the collecting hobby anymore. And that means that their kids are selling their equipment that they spent hundreds of hours working on and getting factory perfect again. Their kids are selling that stuff so they can buy stripper clothes and Funko Pops. All right. There's just... The old tractor hobby was dominated by the pre-boomer generation. That was my experience, and I've been in it since I was like 13 or 14 years old. All right. The boomers weren't really interested in that stuff, and then some of the generations after that kind of are, like especially for homesteading, survivalist type of stuff. Uh, but eh, it's just not, it was our generation and the generation before mine, like between me and the boomers, they just never got into old tractors in large numbers. So that means that grandpa's passed on, and right now his beautiful, like automotive quality paint job, perfect everything. Um, you know, like new bearings in the transmission and he replaced some of the gears that were chipped and everything. I mean, great grandpa, he did it perfectly. And now they're selling that for three or four thousand dollars. They're selling that for less than you can buy the parts for and then sink easily a couple hundred hours into fixing it up. That's the other thing. Working on old tractors, there is no afternoon repair. All right. You, you go to fix something small. You find a couple other small things while you're in there. You go to buy parts, oh, well, these are actually back-ordered. We'll send them to you in three weeks. You know, it's sitting, taking apart for a while. There's no such thing as a fast and easy repair on old farm equipment, especially old tractors and especially now, okay? It is a colossal pain to fix these things up. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy it. And like I said, if it's grandpa's tractor, you want to fix something up to your kids, I think it's awesome. But dollars and cents-wise, Dealing with things like that is going to scrape away what microscopic financial advantage you had fixing it up in the first place. I will tell you, the only way, in my opinion, that you're likely to fix up an old tractor for less than you can just buy one of those ones for restored right now is one of two things. 
Uh, one, you are very patient and you're actually willing to run a looking for ad on Craigslist or whatever for like three months if that's what it takes to find a set of rear tires for less than two grand. If you're willing to do that, it's not so bad. Additionally, if you really don't have much money at all, like to the point where three or $4,000 is a huge expenditure, and don't get me wrong, I know that's a lot of money. What I'm saying is everything costs a lot now, so you can probably barely find a running and driving serviceable pickup that's half decent for three or $4,000, okay? So if you really don't have much money, the other advantage to this to fixing one up is you can do it a little bit at a time all right you get a tractor like you go buy that farm all up the road for a thousand dollars okay so yeah it needs rear wheels but it's okay for that right now I mean you don't have to do that today if you wanted to use it today all right so let's say you heat with wood or something and you can probably limp that through this winter on those wheels all right you save 50 bucks from every paycheck and then after a while, you find some used ones on Craigslist that are serviceable for $800, okay? That's an advantage. But outside of those two limited circumstances, or if you have some like one in a million thing, like someone who's making money because people watch and fix stuff up online, outside of that, you are never going to come out ahead fixing up an old tractor. Not when you can buy fully restored ones for three or $4,000. If you don't believe me, get on your favorite local classified service and just type in restored tractor and see for yourself. It's pretty mind blowing, especially considering that I remember like when I was, before I learned to drive, you were looking at two or $3,000 just for running and driving farm all. The market collapsed. Everything got raped by like 10 to 15 years of inflation and parts costs went up substantially. Okay. So here's the takeaway from this video. If you want to start producing more of your own food, if you want to, you know, pull some trees out of the woods for firewood or for logging or whatever, or maybe you don't have a big truck, but you say, you know, I need a way to get my, you know, six cows to the auction, the auction house that's five miles up the road, and I don't want to buy a truck and pay to register it and insure it for that. Okay, get yourself an old tractor, get yourself a Farmall M or a John Deere A or something. And get one that's fully restored and turnkey and ready to go because, and some people aren't going to like this. Some people are going to say, well, you're just being a vulture, you know, preying on the fact that old man grandpa passed away or whatever. You know, am I really? I think that old grandpa would be thrilled to see some younger guy buy the tractor that he spent like 300 hours getting perfect and then actually using it and actually using it to provide for his family and to be more self-sustainable. I think that all the old grandpas who fix these up, I think they'd love to see that personally. And there is no way you will ever manage to fix one of these up valuing your time for what you can buy one for restored right now. And honestly, that's what we said a few years ago. At this point, now that you're looking at almost two grand for a set of rear wheels, I don't think you could even fix one up not valuing your time for what you can buy them for. All right, so that's what I'm saying. If you want one of these things, Three, four thousand dollars, forty five hundred bucks for that, you know, factory finish farm all super M, MTA, whatever it was that I saw. That's a screaming deal. I vote you go pick up one of those, spend your time doing other things, and um, you know, take advantage of this market if you want an old tractor, but don't waste hundreds of hours of your life fixing one up unless there's, you know, some extenuating circumstance. So that's just a dollars and cents breakdown for you guys. I'd like to thank you for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. Have a good day, everyone.